know your enemy, to know his strength and his weaknesses, to know him directly you see him beyond any shadow of doubt, this is to put yourself at an enormous advantage. There can be no uncertainty, no hesitation. A moment's indecision may cost you your very existence. But a thorough knowledge of what you may expect to come up again, which will make all the difference between success and disaster. If you don't get him first, he'll get you. And so we bring you more examples of German equipment, as well as some you've already seen, a study of which will give you just that advantage over the enemy, should you suddenly come up against him. Here comes a general purpose half-tracked vehicle, which in this case is drawing a 3.7 centimeter anti-tank gun. The detachment is carried in the tractor together with the ammunition. It looks rather like an old-fashioned charabang with its cutaway body instead of doors and with its rows of seats facing inwards. And this makes it very easy to spot. Anti-tank gunners keep on the move along likely lines of tank approach quickly concealing themselves with all materials to hand when they spot the enemy. The Germans have always told their anti-tank gunners that they are an offensive, not a defensive arm. And recently they gave them the official title of Tank Hunters. Winter blossoms into spring and here is the same gun being manhandled through wooded country where no tractor could work. These guns are frequently manhandled in action. Their weight is 800 weight and they can be quickly moved and easily concealed. 3.7 centimeter, 1.45 inch, with a best range of 400 yards and a rate of fire of 12 rounds per minute. So watch out for these babies in the tall grass. And this is what our fellows are waiting for. Here's the baby of the outfit. Whoa, hold it. <laughs> Thanks. The type one, remember? Five small regular bogies with four of them coupled by that girder. A very squat turret, offset towards its right side. And two light machine guns. Head on, direct your SAA and AP fire on vision slits. Periscopes. And at the joint between turret and hull. To the side, your SAA and AP ammo again at the join, but your AP practically anywhere. Right you are, thank you. Very fast is this little fellow, 32 on a road, but at the expense of armor, and therefore very vulnerable indeed. Remember its larger brother, the Type 2? Five bigger and regular spaced bogies with no coupling. And again, a very squat turret, but not offset. Type 2 is armed with one light and one heavy machine gun with a very long barrel. Head on, SAA and AP to be fired at vision slits. Periscopes. And as before, the joint between the turret and the hull. Side view, the joint again. But AP ammo also along this line, level with the top of the bogies. Armor plating is thinner just around here. There are plenty of these Type 2s in existence, so keep your eyes peeled for them. Now for the Type 3, this fellow. It has five, six, or in this case, eight small regular bogies with rubber tires. But five, six, or eight wheeler, they all have the same features. The squat turret has a large door on each side. And a small round conning tire at the rear. Armament consists of a 3.7 centimeter or 1.45 inch gun. and two light machine guns. Head on view, fire your SAA and your AP, as with all tanks, at vision slits, 
periscopes, and the join between the turret and the hull. In addition, with this Type 3, fire at the spot where the gun emerges from the turret. Side view, your SAA and AP at the same join, and AP ammunition, in this case, on this line, the area about the top of the tracks where armour is thinnest. And here comes a big fellow, the cruiser tank, Type 4. It has eight small, regular bogey wheels, a turret similar to Type 3, again with doors at the side, and a small conning tower at the rear. But for armament, Type 4 has a massive looking 7.5 centimeter, or 2.95 inch gun, which helps to distinguish it from its younger brother, the Type 3. and two light machine guns. From head on, SAA and AP should be fired again at vision slits, at periscopes, one here, one the other side, and the same old join between the turret and the hull. Side view, SAA and AP ammo at this join, and in addition, at the engine ventilation louvers. AP only, on a line through the centre of the top bogies. For his heavy armour, he's fairly fast, 30 on a good road, but he's much slower across country and a sitter if you keep your head and remember his vulnerable points. In general, and apart from detail of outline, you can spot the enemy by the regular bogies which they always employ. You can tell ours by their large bogey wheels, filling the entire space between the top and the bottom of the tracks. Usually, these are unevenly spaced as here. Or a combination of medium and smaller ones, such as this. Remember, if unevenly spaced, it's definitely British. Hello, here's an old friend, or rather an enemy, the four-wheeled light-armoured car. It has a very small turret with no roof to it, and its crew consists of two or three. It has one heavy machine gun mounted in the turret, and one light one mounted just behind. Head-on and side view, both AP and SAA fire should be directed at vision slits, and the join between turret and hull. Unless you have an anti-tank weapon, be sure to go for his weak spots. His plating is inclined from the vertical, and the blow will probably glance off unless you can strike him at the proper angle. Here's a new acquaintance, the six-wheeled armoured car. You can spot it by its angular mudguards covering the two back wheels. The very long sloping front with a grilled radiator, and a grid aerial. For armament, it has one heavy machine gun, and one light one. Vulnerability, AP and SAA at vision slits, and the join between the turret and the hull, as with all armoured cars, head-on or side view. His plating is also inclined from the vertical, so be careful what angle you go for him with your AP ammunition. Anti-tank gunners, of course, can let themselves go at him anywhere. And here is his big brother, the heavy eight-wheeled armoured car. It has, you remember, large angular mudguards, each covering two wheels, a streamlined turret well forward, and very often a grid aerial shown here. one light and one heavy machine gun, a crew of four or five, and a maximum speed of 50 miles an hour. As with its youngsters, the four and six wheelers, AP and SAA at vision slits,
many to come on the same old joint. His plating is also inclined from the vertical, so watch out for that. Anti-tank gunners, of course, needn't be too fussy. And now for a cavalcade of tanks and armoured cars. Get them into your mind's eye, so that when you come across them in real life, you'll know them for what they are and where to go for them. In general, remember this, shoot up the tank first, and if there happens to be infantry following on behind, your Rickos and Misses may knock them out at the same time. German infantry have under their own control the 7.5 centimetre, or 2.95 inch, close support infantry gun. Easily manhandled into position almost anywhere, it is a handy weapon with a range of approximately 4,000 yards. With this breach mechanism, the enemy hopes to get off 20 rounds a minute. But a spot of well-aimed rifle fire could soon put them out of action, especially from a flank. Another infantry weapon is the Stokes brand type of mortar, 5 centimetre or 2 inch, and a standard weapon in German rifle companies. Maximum range 500 yards, and fire is generally put down in bursts of 10 rounds, which a well-trained detachment may get off in some 20 seconds. The reconnaissance unit of German infantry divisions carries pneumatic boats, which enable up to 16 men to land silently and make good the opposite bank. Meanwhile, the assault boats of the divisional engineers, wooden keelless boats with a 12 horsepower outboard motor oar to drive and steer, land troops at speed. Flame throwers are in use at another point on the opposite bank. Their bark is far worse than their bite, and they are chiefly employed for their moral effect. The jet can only be thrown 35 yards, will only last one minute, and is harmless unless directed straight at you. The assault troops attack. Carried among their special equipment are pole charges, which are not unlike our Bangalore torpedoes. These are made up with slabs of TNT attached to a board, which in turn is attached to the poles you see here. They are then thrust against embrasures or loopholes in pillboxes. The answer to this one is, shoot up the bloke with the pole. The German general staff attach great importance to motorcycle troops. They are, of course, extremely mobile. When a division advances, they are thrown out well forward as a protective screen. So you'll probably see these boys first.
If you let them, they'll develop a high rate of fire, as can be realized if you watch carefully. Every fourth machine carries its heavy MG-34. An old friend of ours, do you remember? Also used for reconnaissance are the cycle squadrons of all infantry divisions. Like the motorcycle troops, they are allotted MG-34s, which are strapped onto their cycles. Though they carry with them the heavy adjustable mounting, you can just see the bipod here. On this bipod, their range is only 2,000 yards. Cycle squadrons are also highly mobile and can move over any country where roads or tracks are available. The MG-34 on its heavy mounting. This mounting, coupled with the telescopic sight, gives it an accurate range of up to 3,800 yards. After firing short bursts, crews pick up gun and mounting and double to a new position, thereby hoping to avoid being spotted and ranged on by our mortars and field guns. The heavy adjustable mounting can be quickly extended for use as an ACAC weapon. Against attacking aircraft, the tripod is quickly extended and the same gun brought into use with a range of some 3,000 feet. MG-34s are air-cooled by means of these slots in the jacket, and therefore the barrel has to be changed after a continuous 250 round burst. Caliber 0.311 inch, weight 15 and a half pounds without the mounting. Jerry's pretty hot on small arms fire against aircraft flying low, and what they do, you can certainly do, much better. Rifles and machine guns have a devastating effect if you handle them properly. The JU-52, the German paratroop carrying plane, originally a bomber, it is the only normal three-engine one in use. It has no great speed, and it has to come down very low to drop its paratroops. They jump from about three to four hundred feet to avoid drifting or observation. In particular, look for the gap which extends the whole length of the wing between aileron and trailing edge. The JU-52 should be easy money to small arms fire, as the greater part of its fuselage is vulnerable. And these are the parachute troops they carry on parade. When they jump, they wear this loose grey-green overall with very short trouser legs to prevent their equipment fouling the parachute. On landing, the paratroop slips off the overall, takes off his equipment and puts it on again over the overall. Their steel helmets are round with a narrow brim. Remember, no one is so defenseless as a man who has just made the parachute trip. If he should reach the ground alive, and you're in doubt as to where to shoot or to stick your bayonet, here's a suggestion. Got him. After paratroops have seized landing grounds, JU-52s land their air landing troops. These are troops from normal formations who have been trained in emplaning and deplaning. Once they have landed, they complete the occupation of the airfield and the surrounding area, and take over from the paratroops. Clearly, air landing troops and paratroops can't bring their heavier types of artillery with them. And so they make use of this 7.5 centimeter or 2.95 inch mountain gun. The same caliber as the close support infantry gun and used to the same effect, it is obviously an ideal gun for transporting by aircraft. The use of block and tackle enables them to haul up this 7.5 in sections. In this way, the gun may be transported over every type of country and under widely varying conditions. Reassembly is also very rapid. But its best range is only 6,000 yards on account of its light construction, and it is therefore hopelessly outranged by our 25-pounder. And here comes the fellow we do know all about, the Luftwaffe, the pride of that very large field marshal. All very decorative, just so long as no one interferes with them. But once they get a little opposition in the shape of the RAF,
enemy. And just as the much heralded Luftwaffe lies piled up on Britain's scrap heaps, so Germany's whole war machine will vanish into the hot air which created it. <laughs>